Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today we are talking about what to look for when you're buying an EV and then I'm going to give you all my three recommendations of uh, what I would buy. So first off, uh, to kind of start the conversation, I'm going to talk about like three different driving styles. So we've got, if you're a commuter, all you do is you drive like 40 miles a day, maybe a little more, maybe a little bit less. I'm going to talk about road trippers. Road trippers are people who uh, like to take trips of 400 miles or more. And then lastly, the casual driver, where you drive less than 40 miles a day. All right, so the first thing that you want to pay attention to when you're looking for an EV is the charging curve and the charging speed average. So um, the charging curve is how fast your car charges over time. Um, most cars start out charging faster and then it gets slower as you get closer and closer to having a full battery. Um, so for my Kona, I start charging at 77 kilowatts and then it drops down, and then drops down, drops down. As I get closer to 80%, it's usually around like 30, 36 to 22 uh, kilowatts. Um, the Ionic 5, which is a really popular car, starts really high, uh, 220, 230, 240 kilowatts, um, holds it for a good amount of time, and then it, again, it starts to taper. I, I don't remember that curve exactly, but you can go check out any of those videos. Um, if you were to take kind of all the different uh, speeds at different time and average them together, you would get the average charging speed. So about how many you know, kilowatts you're gonna get uh, over whatever period of time. So that's something you wanna pay attention to. Um, a car that has a really, really good char charging curve and a pretty good average is the Audi e-tron because that charges around 140 kilowatts, 150 kilowatts, but it holds that all the way to 80%. So its average for 50 and 80% is pretty much 150 kilowatts. Whereas maybe another car, it starts at 200, but then drops down to 150 and then drops down to 100, right? It doesn't hold it 200 the whole time. That average is going to be about the same or lower. Uh, and obviously all the cars are different. So you want to pay attention to the charging curve and um, pay attention to how fast it charges it takes to get to 50% with the average and then how fast it takes to get to 80% with the average. Another thing you want to pay attention to is the range. So here I'm going to go back to my different types of drivers. Um, so if you're a commuter, you want to find a car that probably gets like 200 to 280 miles. Um, that's going to be more than enough to get to and from work. Uh, and then you can charge it home and you'll be good to go. For a road tripper, I'm going to say you're going to want a car that is 280 uh, or higher. You know, it doesn't have to be 280, but I just think it's a lot more, you can be a lot more comfortable when you're driving, maybe drive a little bit faster, maybe run the AC, stuff like that on a road trip if you have a car that has um, a higher projected mile mileage. And then lastly, for the casual driver, uh, it doesn't particularly matter. Um, you can get a car that has as many miles as you want, but you could certainly uh, entertain something that has uh, lower mileage uh, or maybe like an all-wheel drive vehicle that tend to have lower mileage. Uh, uh, to go along with range, just so you all are aware, the EPA tends to be a little bit more conservative than what the car can actually do. And then the WTLP tends to be a little bit more aggressive than what your car can actually do. Uh, so my Kona, it's rated at 258 miles, um, in the, uh, the winter with heat running, I get like 200, 220 in the spring, summer, I get about 300, 310. So, um, you know, maybe you know, you do the average It's about, you know, the, about that, uh, EPA projected, uh, but the WTOP is definitely a little bit, um, uh, ambitious in what it's uh, projecting. And then lastly, with range, uh, in most cases, I would say don't buy more uh, range than you need. Uh, so if you don't need the, the high mileage, why why bother buying it? Uh, even if you are someone who gets like a good commuter car, you could still road trip in it, but obviously it wouldn't be as uh, ideal as if you had a car with a, a higher mileage. The last thing you wanna um, pay attention to is the price. There are EVs with all sorts of prices. 
um, and it's it's really up to you and and you know your 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 bank account how much you want to spend on your car. Uh, but just make sure you're not overpaying for something that uh, isn't really worth your time and isn't getting you what you need as far as your driving needs are concerned. So a few final thoughts when it comes to what to look for when you're buying an EV. Uh, don't pay too much attention to incentives for free charging. Free charging is awesome. However, most people aren't going to have Electrify America or EVgo close enough where it's going to matter for you. Um, so while it is an awesome perk, it may not be as useful as they make it out to be. Next, especially in the current market, don't overpay. Okay, don't pay over MSRP because if you do, the savings you're hoping to get in gas, you're basically blowing and spending over MSRP. So try and say it at MSRP or below. A lot of dealerships I'm seeing, if they don't charge over MSRP, they're advertising it on their page. So go through, see what uh, dealers are and are not charging over MSRP and uh, make your decision that way. And lastly, know where your car is assembled. With this upcoming legislation for the... Um, the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, uh, you get the $7,500 tax credit, but it's only for cars assembled in the United States of America. So if your car is not assembled, you're not gonna get that, that non-refundable tax credit. So make sure you pay attention to that, that way you don't um, budget having that $7,500 to help pay for your car when it really doesn't even exist. The first vehicle I wanna recommend is the Hyundai Ioniq 5. This is a great car for road tripping and for the average commuter. This car has a great charging curve going from 10% to 80% in 18 minutes using a DC fast charger. This vehicle with the real wheel drive has a range of 303 miles and it's all for a starting price on the SE model at $44,000 before the federal tax incentive. My next recommendation is the Volkswagen ID4. This is a great car for the family and the average commuter. The new 2023 ID4 is supposed to have 170 kilowatt power charging. Um, I'm not sure what the charging curve is yet, but my guess is the charging time is going to go from 38 minutes all the way down to 28 minutes. As soon as I know, what the new curve is, I will let you all know um, to keep you up to date. The car has an advertised range of 275. However, the 3.0 update is supposed to extend the range slightly. Not a ton, but slightly. Why I like this vehicle a lot is the affordable price for the size of the vehicle and for the range. The model year 2023 ID4 standard with the 62 kilowatt hour gross battery starts at $37,495, which is reasonably priced and great for the commuter. And the ID4 Pro base model, which is the 82 kilowatt hour battery, starts with an MSRP of $42,495. The last vehicle I want to recommend is the Chevy Bolt EV, or the EUV as well. It's basically the same car, slightly bigger in appearance, um, but less miles and a little bit more expensive. So the Chevy Bolt EV has a charging curve of 10 to 80% in 73 minutes. This is certainly not the best, but it's good enough for the, um, the casual driver who doesn't really need to use a fast charger. On that note, since it's, I think this is a great car for the casual driver and should just be home charged, this car does have an 11.5 kilowatt uh, charging speed on a level two charger if you have that at home, which you can have that installed, which is great. So um, this makes it a little bit better than the Kona um, because the uh, level two charging speed is actually faster than the Kona's level two charging speed. So um, again, while the DC fast charging is not great, the level two is awesome and perfect for what this car is intended for. This car has a range of 259 miles, which is the same as the Kona. Uh, and it starts at a really, really, really enticing price of $25,600 for the 
2023 model year uh, coming out. So it makes this a really, really affordable car. And with the upcoming um, legislation and the, the um, Chevy being able to have the EV tax credit again, that would make this car starting at seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800. So I think this is absolutely the best choice for the casual driver, even though I don't really like the way it looks. I do want to add an honorable mention because this is my car and I really do enjoy it and I think it is better uh, in every way except for price and level two charging is the Kona Electric. The Kona Electric 2022 looks really nice and I'm sure the 2023 will look just as nice. The charging curve is 10 to 80% in 47 minutes, which is almost 30 minutes faster than the Chevy Bolt EV. Uh, but like I said, it has a max level two charge speed of 7.2 kilowatts, making it not as desirable, but for the, again, for the average driver, you're probably not gonna to notice a difference. Um, I would say uh, with this DC fast charging speed that it, you could road trip it, but it's definitely not a desirable road tripper at all because the charging is gonna take too long for most people. Again, the range is 258 miles for the front wheel drive, very similar to the Chevy Bolt EV. Uh, and I've actually gotten far more than that um, in the, 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 the warmer months in around like, you know, 60 to 80 degree weather. And lastly, the price is $34,000 for the uh, SEL uh, starting model, which is um, much more expensive than the Chevy Bolt, but I think you definitely get a bigger car, um, slight, uh, much faster DC charging. I feel like it has a little bit more space in the interior. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope my uh, tips about what to look for when you're buying an EV were helpful. And I hope you also enjoyed my three recommendations of cars that uh, I would get if I had the money. So again, uh, like and subscribe below. Tell your friends about this channel. I hope you all have been enjoying all the shorts I've been putting out. I've been uh, trying something different with those. So I uh, hope you enjoy that. Otherwise, I will see you all next time.